About a year ago, my friend Phil gave me this roll of Eastman Color Negative, AKA 7291, that 16 millimeter film, and he had had it perforated so that it could be run in standard eight cameras. So great, I have color film that I can use in my standard eight camera, and because Eastman Color Negative uses ECN processing, and I've got lots of ECN too, so that's even better. The only problem is, is that this film was deeply expired. I looked it up and turns out 7291 was made between 1983 and 1989. So this film could be anything from 31 to 37 years old. And as a result, it's taken a hit in the sensitivity department. When it was fresh, it was 100 ASA. It has definitely gone down from 100 ASA. It's become much less sensitive. The only film that really looks good is uh, shot in broad daylight, preferably with the sun shining. The problem is, is that I don't know exactly how sensitive it is now. So I need to find out its new ASA rating. If I'm gonna use it with a camera with a light meter, or I'm gonna use an external light meter, I'm gonna need to know exactly what new setting to put that on, the uh, f-stop and so forth. So how do you exactly test what a film's ASA is if you don't know it? Well, firstly, I loaded some of it into this rather nice Bolex B8L, which is a standard eight camera, takes 25 foot lengths, and it has single frame capability. As you can see, it can take frames one at a time if you press down on this lever. Um, although, for what I'm going to do, it's much handier to have a release cable. I've got this rather smart black and chrome one which matches the camera very nicely. And you can advance the film one frame at a time by just pressing this little plunger. So what am I doing with that? Well, I took one frame at the widest open aperture, that's the lowest f-stop, moved it on a couple of f-stops, took one frame there, moved it on a couple, took one frame there, so moved it on a couple, took one frame there. So the ones I chose were f1.9, f4, f8, and f16. Uh, not the same ones that I'm showing you here because this was just for illustration. And for good measure, I also did the same with a Canon, a Canon 512, very nice standard eight camera. Uh, this one's a bit buggered up, but doesn't matter. It has manual aperture, and I took that at 1.2, f2.8, f5.6, and f11. So between the Bolex and the Canon, I have the full range of f-stops. So when it had been through the ECN2, it looked like this. Now you can see the left side of the picture, everything looks kind of like uh, orangey and uh, yellow. And on the right side, you can see what looks like some greenish images. That's because the right hand side is the Bolex and I put a 85 filter, a sunlight filter over the lens. So that's why uh, you've got a more correct negative color there. You'll see later when I scan it. So I had this long strip of just all di four different f-stops on one side, four different f-stops on the other side, Question is, why did I do one single frame for every f-stop and keep repeating it? Why didn't I just like film for a second on one f-stop and then move it on and move for a, move, film a second on the next f-stop? Well, that's because I needed all of these different exposures throughout the entire length of the film because I was also testing how long I should leave it in the developer. And the developer test I did involved putting it into the developer and then waiting a few minutes, putting it in a bit more, waiting a few minutes, putting it in a bit more. So now I've got uh, eight different apertures tested at three different developing times. I use three minutes, six minutes, and nine minutes. So I got so much data from this test, which is great. So here's the negative just after I developed it. I tried to put as many different colored things into the shot at once. That's why the, the uh, bowl of fruit. Okay, so now I've got single frames of all these different f-stops. I labeled each one of them because it's much easier to work out what's going on if you've got the actual f-stop in the bottom corner there. And some very interesting data it uh, turned up to. In fact, if you play the whole thing from the widest f-stop to the darkest f-stop, you can see the aperture closing down as it goes from uh, light to dark. 
and most of these shots are kind of underexposed. In fact, I've found that the best aperture for a sunny day like this with the uh, filter on was about, I'd say, f4. So that's uh, the important piece of information that I need. F4, I'd say f1.9 when it was wide open, I was losing, it was very overexposed and I was losing some definition there as well. Uh, f2.8 looked good in the shadows, still a bit brighter in the sunlight, but f4, I would say it was, uh, it, with a bit of correction, it would probably be about right in the, in the broad sun. And I'd say about f2.8 uh, in the shadows. And f1.2, 1.9, I think I'll just save those for uh, indoor shots. Anyway, right, now I need to work out my exposure time. Uh, luckily, that's very easy with the Bolex because the exposure time uh, is printed on the uh, this little lever here. And it's uh, if, you, if I zoom in, you can see behind all those grains of sand that are stuck in there, it's 38. So that's 1 38th of a second. You can actually move this lever to adjust the shutter angle. If your shutter angle is half of the fully open, that of course gives you 1 76th of a second. So f4 at 1 38th of a second is about right for us. Now once we've got those two parts of the triangle, the exposure triangle, we can work out the other part which of course is our ASA. And the best way I found to do that is to use a light meter. Okay, I don't have a proper light meter, I used a light meter app on my phone. Don't judge me. Um, so I manually set the aperture on the light meter app to f2 because it was a cloudy day when I took these readings. And with the ASA set to 100, which was the original value of this film when it was fresh, the app said I should be shooting at 1 350th of a second, which I know can't be right because I shot it at 1 38th of a second. Allowing for the daylight filter, we're looking to get that 350th of a second down to about 1 45th of a second. So I start dialing down the ASA and taking readings as I go until the exposure time hits 1 45th of a second. And it does so here at ASA 16. So there's our answer. In the 31 to 37 years since this film was made, it's gone down from 100 ASA all the way down to about 16 ASA, which pretty much tallies with the results I'd been getting, i.e. this is a film for sunlight and bright days. And now I know that it's 16, I can even set the little light meter on my B8L to 16 because it only has these low ASA numbers. As long as I've got a nice amount of light, then I'm laughing. Here I am laughing. Ha 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 ha. I know what ASA this film is now. Hurrah. And I'm going to do the same with a couple of other ones. I'm going to do some, use some Kodak 20, bleh, excuse me. I'm going to use some Kodachrome 25. And with my newfound powers, I did the same exposure bracketing on this Kodachrome 25. I developed it in Caffanol CH and found that it had also gone down to 16 ASA, down from 25, which for a film that expired in August 1977, isn't too bad. I'm only doing all this stuff because I've almost run out of 500T and 500T is just fantastic stuff. You can shoot that everywhere. In the meantime, for sunny days, I'm getting the old 7291 out because I've still got a, at least 150 feet of it in 25 foot rolls. That's going to last me quite a while. Great. Okay. That's all I've got to say right now. Don't give up on expired film. It's cheap and you can still use it. And if you color correct it well enough, you can still make it look good. Right. That's all for me today. See you all later. Bye bye.